Well, Mr. Baines? They'll all be stowed by midday, give them luck. Military stores in the forehead old, remember? The rest empty? Well, I thought you said cargo for the Cape was hard to find these past few months. Mining equipment for Walvis Bay, all cratered and easy. You signed for it? Aye, this afternoon. Uh, at the exchange, uh, Sheldon will be the broker. Got time for some lunch here to join me. Aye, if you're Bay. Morning, Dunwoody! Fine morning! He's gone up in the world lately, isn't it? Since your sister made him general manager, there's no knowing the man. Well, if you fancied yourself in the carriage and pair, you could have had it if you'd stayed ashore. I know, I know. Work's too hard for a woman, just Elizabeth, you know. Always stuck in that office. Right, come on, Will. Morning, ma'am. You may have a fine horse, sir, and it may have fine breeding. What a pity its master has less. Uh, what have I done? This, sir. Mud on the lace, mud on the skirt. <laughs> and some on your face, I see. Oh, don't wipe it, ma'am. It suits. <laughs> may I have the honor of knowing with whom I'm talking? Oh, we are not talking, sir. Good day. Come along, Sunbeam. <laughs> Hadst thou lived in days of old, Oh, what wonders had been told. Very important, sir. Go away. I will, I will, but first smile. Leave me alone, sir. But, ma'am, wasn't it you who chased me? Wasn't it you who demanded conversation? I was riding quietly by when you, like a bolt from the oh, blue... Oh, damn you, sir. Men. <laughs> and now, good day, ma'am. Who's that man? What? The one done what he's talking to. No idea. Looks like a dog with two tails does Dunwoody. Wonder why. Pride. I'll see you at the club. Aye. 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 Well, I don't think I congratulated you on your promotion. Most kind, Mr. O'Neill. Most kind of you. Well deserved. Oh, uh, may I introduce uh, Herr Becker, Mr. O'Neill? Uh, Mr. Becker, Mr. Becker, your attention. Herr O'Neill is the eigentümer der O'Neill linie Herr Becker. Yeah, done. That's right. Then. Oh, I'm afraid Herr Becker doesn't speak any English, Mr. O'Neill. But uh, if you'll excuse us, we were just discussing a little business we have in hand. Uh, we shall start. Uh, yeah. Well, a good talk, Mr. Becker. Talk. Ich schlage vor, wir können es so machen. Dunwoody did well, Lady Fogarty. Herr Becker was delighted. Ah, Sheldon, I've been looking for you. Excuse me, Elizabeth. I'm just a word, eh? Well, now, uh, shall we sign our contract, eh? Ah, well, I'm afraid there's been a change, you need. Oh, what change? Well, my client has been checking freight rates. He's found a better rate and accepted it. You've done what? Oh, the matter was taken out of my hands. Oh, now, listen here, Sheldon. Because you foisted a load of traction engines onto Baines last month, you promised me a decent cargo in recompense. Remember? I'm sorry, but since no contract was signed, he was quite within his rights. Rights? Rights be damned. I have a ship there ready to sell with only half a cargo on the strength of your promise. Now, where can I get another cargo from at this short notice? I'd like to help you, but I've nothing on my books. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who took it? Fraser line, was it? My sister, eh? He dealt direct. I had no part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me a moment, don't we? Oh, hey, certainly, Mr. O'Neill. Well, now, I believe you've stolen my cargo. Stolen? 
Well, you don't deny that you're taking mining equipment to Walvis Bay, do you? I don't. And I see no reason for you to be so put out, Jim. Look, I have a fully laden ship expected in the Cape within the morning. Herr Becker had some papers he needed translating from German. Mr. Dunwoody was able to oblige. It's only natural he should then ask us to quote him a read. <laughs> that jumped up little clerk, where did he learn to speak German? And his mother's knee. I mm. thought you knew she was German. Mr. Dunwoody seems to have upset you, James. I am sorry. Well, sorry you won't find me a cargo, will it? But we understood that speed was the essence of this contract, and I understand your one and only steamer is still not in commission. Yes, well, that's as may be. I understood nothing about speed. Well, then perhaps Herr Becker changed his mind. Yeah, oh, I did change for him. Oh, really, James? Look, all I know is that I had a cargo promise. Well, then why don't you talk to Herr Becker? Oh, but I was forgetting you don't speak German, do you, James? Excuse me. Begging your pardon? Yeah. Are you the master? And if I am, I'd like a minute of your time. There's some papers to show you. A favour to ask. Don't be asking too much. What's your name? John. Josh John. Make your best come aboard. Second mate, it says. Oi. Well, we got no berths for second mate, Mr. Sharp. Sorry. I'm not looking for one, Captain. I'm after a seaman's berth. One way, work me passage. You a desperate man. Got no law after me, if that's what you mean. Well? You seen from those? I've been about a bit. Indian Ocean, China Sea, Mediterranean coasters, North Africa, Turkey. Now you've got some time in, I can see that. I want to stop, make my fortune. I can do it. There's talk of gold being found in the Transvaal, but well, I can get there from Walvis Bay. I've got a small stake, I'll turn it into a fortune. In be the back door. Time it gets to be big, there'll be nothing for the little men but scraps while I'm getting in now. On rumours? Ah, more than rumours. <laughs> Listen, sir. I don't drink, not now. I don't fight less than I have to. And I know every sea from here to China and back again via hell. And I know how to work. Well, tomorrow I sign on the crew. You come back then. Thank you, Captain. And good day to you, Mr. Sharp. I hope your temper's improved, James. Well, cigar's not bad. Well, it's one of Daniel's best. It ought to be better than not bad. Oh, yes. Well, uh... There's no need to be embarrassed by mention of Daniel James, not now. Are you keeping busy, Elizabeth? Uh, quite, Letty, yes. More coffee? Oh, thank you. I wish Charlotte was busier. Idle hands make the devil's work easy. She called this morning. She seems dissatisfied with her life. Yes, she is. You seen her, Elizabeth? The other day. I promise not to say anything, but, well, she came to see me about William. She seems to feel, oh, I don't know, to blame in some way. Oh, I see. I told her not to distress herself. She has other responsibilities. Quite right. Doesn't she concern you, James? Your own daughter? She is dissatisfied, bored by her life. She's made her bed. Oh, nonsense. You ought to tell her, James. She's a simple duty to her children and to Samuel. It's their business, not ours. Well, it's perfectly clear that you don't intend to lift a finger, so it seems that Elizabeth and I must. Well, I shan't be there to lift one, will I? I'll be in South Africa within the month. Very well. Elizabeth and I will manage without you. Well, I'm sorry, Letty, but I'm off to Port Nolloth to do some business on a copper concession. And to deliver the cargo that Mr Dunwoody so cleverly negotiated. I'm very pleased with him, James. So... I mismanaged Charlotte on my own. Look, leave Charlotte to Samuel. He knows how to manage her. And then Mr. Andrews suggested that I could do well for myself and for the business. Are you listening, my dear? No. But you could be such a help to me, Charlotte. Hmm? The men admire you. All the women are jealous. The men are older than my father, Samuel. And the women would be jealous of anyone less than 50. I was bored by it. But this is business, my dear. If we're going to expand, we have to mix with these people. They have influence, capital. And are boring. I'll tell you what I'll do. I've been keeping this as a little surprise. If you want to talk business, talk to Letty. You'd be well suited. Let me tell you about my surprise. Now, I've been planning a trip for quite a few days now, and I have a notion you'd rather like to come. Get away from the house, leave the children. Come to Manchester with me. 
I'm looking over another mill there. You'd enjoy that. <laughs> what have I said? <laughs> What's so amusing? Alice up to Darden Park. Yeah, thank you, my dear. It's a feat. Perfectly burned me a bit in the feeder geschäft to Mark. Good day, Captain. Mr. Dunn, would you please tell the captain I'm ready to sail? I will, my lady. I can in the sick and lady here. I see a lot of in Allah, I like a leaf of bed. Next. Sign. Come, Baines. Agent says he'll hold us to that contract. So we sail, full cargo or no. Next. Sign. Don't worry. I'd like to press gang him into a voyage. Well, now, ballast. Uh, jumped up a little clock. Right. You know the phrase has snatched that contract right from under my nose. My own sister, I mean, would you credit it? Uh, come on, make your mark. So we have to sail. Half empty. Too late now to get a decent cargo. My gum, it makes me want to spit. Excuse me, sir. The cargo, sir. From Fraser, as you said? Sharp's a mate, sir. He's got all the papers, but he's working his passage this trip as seaman. Well? The short chat with the bald head, sir. He was talking to another man outside the Fraser offices this morning. I know him, sir. Oh, Don Woody. No, the other man, sir. Herr Becker. Is that what he calls himself now? Well, go on. I came across Herr Becker twice, sir. Once in Istanbul, then again in Varna, in the Black Sea. I know where Varna is. Go on. He's the agent for a man called Zakharov. And Zakharov deals in only one thing. Guns, sir. If I know anything, those crates of mining equipment being loaded aboard the Fraser steamer won't contain picks or shovels or drills or, or any damn thing save carbines and ammunition. Poor old Dunwoody. Now he's a gun runner. Poor old British Army, sir, if the Zulus get him. Or the Boers are looking for a scrap. Mind you, the British Navy's as edgy as they were when I went through last time out. They'll have that boat out the water and the crew and captain and the rest under lock and key so fast they won't know what's in them. My sister owns that ship. And she's sailing on her. Here, you. Come with me. Baines, will you get the ship ready to sail? Aye, aye, sir. Well, come on, you, come on. He's my guest. They saw your business with me, sir, and are guaranteed to say... I you want to talk leaving. to you, Sheldon. I'm engaged, Mr. Aneagle. And disengage. I, was... I said I want to talk to you. Excuse me. I am so sorry. I really must protest. So, I'll do the protesting. That car, you slipped my sister. Who's the owner? Not your business, sir. Yes, sir. I want to know who owns that cargo. I'll find out one way or another. Herr Becker. Is the agent, not the owner? Oh, come on. Mr. Zakharov, I understand, Middle Eastern client. New. Is something amiss? He deals in war, sir. You've just succeeded in making my sister into a gun runner. I'll get data you. Come on. Just the one, thank you, ma'am. Chest, my new boots. What the devil are you doing here, Burgess? I thought you were supposed to be getting that steamer of yours ready for sea. I looked in the office, no sight, no sound. The club was the same. I thought you'd be bound to go to Earth. No, no time for that now. Letty, I'll sail in an hour. But, James, I thought tomorrow was the earliest. Ah, well, Elizabeth is in trouble. I have to stop her. What's the matter? Oh, later, Letty, I'm in a hurry. I want to talk to you, Mr. Aneedin. Yes, well, I don't want to talk to you. Not until that ship of yours is in water. There's other problems. Oh, what problems? Don't forget me boots, Letty. What problems now? It'll be another month. You think I enjoy it? I'm beached and making hardly enough to keep body and soul. You get paid enough. Look, you told me that steamer of yours had been dry dock for three weeks and then ready for sea. <laughs> another month? Not my fault. You don't understand, Mr. Needham. Steamers have special problems. Don't teach your grandmother. What's happened? Letty, don't forget my two reefers. If you keep still a minute, I'll explain. Lloyd Surveyor turned up rough. Won't give us a machinery certificate, he says, until the boiler has been seen to. 
Just descaling, you told me. Not now. He says it has to be replaced. Re what? Without a new boiler, he won't give her the certificate. Of course, we could use her. I'm willing to help with Lloyd's. Oh, not while you sail under an Eden colours. How much then? Five hundred. Oh, oh, is that all? <laughs> well, uh, let me see now. One thousand two hundred to buy half share. Six hundred to bail you out. Five hundred for a new boiler. By gum, you are a sharp operator, aren't you? It's not needed, Mr. Eneden. The surveyor's taken a me, so what can we do? You get a new boiler. Then you get a certificate. Otherwise, we don't get first-class cargo, and neither of us see our money back again. Then you can try persuading Samuel Eneden to sign a contract to supply his chandlery stations at the Cape. Gibraltar, Cape Verde. Now that should keep you jumping. Earn your keep. Letty, is that Chester man ready yet? But David's head on the port beam, my lady. Yes, I had noticed, Captain Forbes. Are we still making ten knots? Twelve now, my lady. If we keep this up, we'll make a fast passage. Near enough. Well, near enough isn't ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Visit from that Seth Burgess. He's not pulling his weight, you know. And now Elizabeth. Well, she's got a ten-hour start on us at least. We'll find her. Mrs. A penny an hour extra. Aren't you worth it, Mrs. McGahey? Of course we're worth it. I don't get it, that's all. There's a catch somewhere. Luke, you work 65 hours a week for 15 shillings. You see nothing of your families. You're worn out. I'm reducing the hours, that's all. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. 50 oh, hours on. a week. And a meal provided. Well, I've already talked to the builders. They say they can turn this storeroom into a decent eating place. Uh, put a cooking range in. Tables, seats. Oh, yes. And a better light. What for? Well, you've complained in the past that you've not enough lights over the machines. I'll provide it. Look, Mrs. What's all this about? Look, I wanted to tell you before the rumours start. I'm thinking of selling. Now, whoever buys this place will be bound to honour any arrangements we may have come to. It'll be drawn up. They'll have to honour it. You got someone in mind? It'll cost a penny or two. Yes, I have. And yes, it will. He'll know what he has to know before the sale. He'll agree my price and my conditions. But they might put in their own workers and cut out the old hands. It's usual. Better the devil you know. I'll get a guarantee that none of you will be thrown out of work. And the new master? I'll tell you as and when. Trust me. Now listen, all of you. You've all worked well for me. So if you need any help, advice, well, you know where I am. Luke, I'm just trying to make sure that you're not all working until you're too tired to stay awake. Like Betsy there. <laughs> <laughs> She's used to lying down, her. <laughs> It's the night work, missus. She does too much of it. Isn't that right, Betsy? It's the night work makes you sleepy. <laughs> Damn sight like better paid than here. I'm better company. Oh. I'll get paid for what you do for now. <laughs> so you're going to sell them? If I get what I want, yes. <laughs> well then.
carrying too much sail. Elizabeth has to stop at Cape Bird for coal. We must catch her there. We're going like this, we'll be there before her. Huh, all the better. Of course, she, she could take two days coaling if we're lucky. She needs all the luck she can get, so do we. She could go to jail, you know. Have the ship confiscated. No, we must stop her. Comfortable, ma'am? Quite, thank you, Captain. Nothing you need? Nothing, thank you. We should be coaling by noon tomorrow. I wondered if you'd enjoy a carriage to tour the island while we're there. I could arrange one for you. Uh, no, thank you, Captain Forbes. I don't wish to delay you. I'd rather like to make a fast passage. I think you may have no fears on that score. We can be ready to sail within the day. A day? So long? Eighteen hours, then. I will see to it. Of course you will, Captain. You've been most efficient. I had noticed. Thank you, ma'am. You're quite sure there's nothing you need? Nothing, thank you, except, of course, to make a fast passage, and I'm sure you'll do that. Good night, Captain Forbes. Good night, ma'am. Samuel, how pleasant. Trust I'm not disturbing you. Oh, I think I can find time for you, just. I wondered if you'd like to come to dinner this week. Must be a lonely prospect with Uncle James away. Charlotte would enjoy the company. She's, um, she's rather low, I think. Yes. May I sit down? Oh, yes, of course. Would you like some tea or coffee? Ah, if you wouldn't mind, I think I'd rather like a rum, just to keep out the cold. Yes, of course. How are your schemes going? Schemes? What schemes, Samuel? Oh, come now, Aunt Letty. It's the talk of the Chamber of Commerce. More money for your women. There have been some long faces at the chamber, I can assure you. Well, if people listen to rumours, Samuel, that's hardly my business. If people paid better, they'd get better work and happier workers. Thank you. Have you told that to Uncle James? Oh, I've tried. Did he listen? Only to suggest that I put my house in order before I start to criticise him. So I've taken his advice. I'm doing what I can for my women. And possibly causing trouble for other employers, Aunt Letty. There have been some harsh words said. Oh? By some factory owners. They're concerned. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. That's all. But will you show a profit? Enough. Really? Come to the point, Samuel. The flock works. The whole business. I'll take it off your hands. Oh, it's a serious offer. I mentioned it to Uncle James. I'll give you a fair price for it. Beg pardon, ma'am. I was hoping to find Mr. O'Neill. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. My husband shouldn't be too long. If I've called at an inconvenient time, Mrs. O'Neill. If you have an appointment, Mr. Burgess, I'm sure he'll be back. It's business, of course. Aye, but nothing to bore a lady with. You've missed the jack on the Queen. Oh. Thank you. It's too fine a day to stay indoors playing cards. Is it, Mr. Burgess? I hadn't noticed. Sunshine, light breeze, beautiful. Are you from the Chamber of Commerce? Me, ma'am? No, ma'am. Well, business, you said. I'm not part of the Chamber of Commerce. No, I'm a sailor like your father. Well, almost. What is almost? He runs to sail, I run to steam. Oh, then my father wouldn't approve of you, sir. We are in partnership. Oh. Uh, will you take tea? I really can't wait too long. Uh, but I thought you had an appointment, and Samuel is always punctual. Always. To tell the truth, ma'am, I was just calling on the chance he might be here. Perhaps I could call again. On the chance that he might be here? I'll take that chance. If you wouldn't mind, will you tell him I was asking for him? I think you're due. Congratulations, Captain Forbes. Thank you, ma'am. Eighteen hours to the minute. Filthy business, coaling. It is indeed, ma'am. But I took you at your word. I promised you we'd coal in 18 hours. You're very sure of yourself, Captain. I know how to work a ship, ma'am. Do you enjoy it? I enjoy working for the Fraser line, Lady Fogarty. 
We have a very good contract from Herr Becker, Captain Forbes, and he's promised us more work if we make good time to rule this bay. You do understand me? We will be on time, ma'am, I assure you. I run a tight ship. Then you will appreciate that these things do not go unnoticed. The Fraser line knows how to reward a good master. Thank you, ma'am. To tell you the truth, I think it's very foolish of my brother to remain in sail. He really will be left behind, don't you think? I do indeed, ma'am. Why don't you put the tops on? Who's captain of this ship, you or me? We're only doing about five knots. Well, walking about won't help, neither. We've missed her. I'm sure we'd catch her at Cape Verde. I mean, we've made good passage so far. Well, we'll find her before she gets to Wolvis Bay. With a fair wind, that is. Come on, Morgan, your fingers and thumbs. Hey, let me help you. you come round the other side there. All right, take them to my cabin. Is it broken? You'd be better judge of that than me. Badly bruised, I'd say. Oh, I'm not complaining, sir. I was a fool. Could have broken my back. Mind you, we make the sort of passage we made the past week. We'll find your sister, sir. Best be right. You best be right about her cargo. <laughs> you told the crew why you've taken passage with us. <laughs> if I said that, you'd have half the crew jumped ship at the Cape, sir. <laughs> no, I'm not stupid. I've got a stake to think on and all. You really think that you can uh, find gold? Oh. I mean, enough to make it pay? I, I've talked and I've studied. Hmm? I just want to dig a hole and, and take what I can get. That's all I'm interested in. Hmm. And quick, before the rest of the world gets in there. Well, we'll be needing the money. Oh, if some. Enough to get me to the Transvaal. A business venture without enough cash in hand is a wasted venture. Oh, I'll manage. Well, you did me a favour, I'll do you one. A favour? Fifty guineas. How do you mean? I'll stick you fifty guineas. Anything you make and I'll take ten percent. Is that fair? You promise nothing. I'll gamble on that. If you find out, I'll make that. You've got fifty guineas to play around. Papers, signatures, contracts? Oh, I don't want a contract. Just your agreement and a handshake. Then you shall have it. And thank you, sir. I'll not let you down. I think that'll do you. Off you go. You're getting near Royal Navy patrols now, sir. Hope we find your sister. If they do decide to search your ship... Mm, we'll find her. You might tell Baines from me, though, to post another lookout on the master, eh? Aye, aye, sir. Right then, a price. Let's not haggle about it. Nine thousand and the promise that you stay out of the business for five years. Ten thousand and we'll not haggle. Mm. You two have talked about nothing but business all through dinner. I'm going to bed. No, we won't be long, Charlotte. I'm sorry. You must forgive me. Samuel, I'm going up. Very well, Charlotte. You see? Good night, Lucy. Good night to you. Very well, then. Ten thousand. Done. Good. Charlotte's gone to bed, Samuel. Yes, I know. She said. She's had enough of our business talk. Yes, it, uh, it bores her, I'm afraid. Look, Samuel, I don't want to pry, but don't you think she's... Well, she's very young, very highly strung. She needs to enjoy life, more than dull dinners with businessmen. Yes, I am aware of Charlotte's weaknesses, Aunt Letty.
Morning, ma'am. Morning. It's a long way home, my lady. I was just thinking the very same. It's been good for me, this voyage, Captain Forbes. It's blown away a few bad dreams. Glad to hear it, ma'am. And you've done well. I think so, ma'am. Oh, you'll never do, Captain Forbes. People expect sea captains to be romantic figures. You know, swashbuckling, roistering, not quiet, ambitious men like yourself. We'll be in Walvis Bay in 24 hours, ma'am. Excuse me. Charlotte? Charlotte? I managed to get tickets for Mr. Irving. Taken carriage, gone for a drive. Damnation. Mrs. O'Neill. I'm sorry, ma'am. If I'm interrupting anything, I'll. No. No, I was just looking at the ships. When I was a child, I'd come and watch the men loading my father's ships. I used to dream then. And now? Not now. <laughs> then more's the pity, I say. I dream still. I'm a grown man. That wouldn't interest a lady. Oh, indeed it does. I'd begun to believe men thought only of business, money, making the wheels of commerce turn. <laughs> Don't mock me. I'm not mocking. Men who think like that miss half of life, I always think. I thought, well, I thought a man like you would have ships and engines and I don't know what in his mind. No time for dreaming. Wrong. My father would come here with me. He wanted me to be a boy. He talked then to me. He told me he used to dream about the sea, islands, Sandy beaches under the sun. He starts with nothing, you see. I wish he'd talk to me now. I have dreams, too. I'll talk, if you want. I'm paying you. Why aren't you in the factory working? You paying? A lousy 15 shilling a week to sweat me guts out. You can keep it, missus. But, but I, don't, I don't understand. You, you mean you've stopped working? You could say that. Look, don't you out me out no sermons either. Listen, I don't take on sailors. Just the best. Four pound a week. Easy. Bored businessmen who are fed up with their prissy-mouthed wives. But it's wrong, Betsy. It's wrong. It might be wrong, but it pays. But... We must be close, Baines. Bad fair winds. Perhaps today or tomorrow. A guinea for the first crew member! To spot the phrase a steamer. Just to think of a way of stopping her. Aye, aye, sir. That's all. She's a mile away. 
on off her starboard bow. I can see her lights clear enough. Good. She won't stop for you, sir. She won't stop for anyone. Oh, yes, she will. Now, listen, Baines. As soon as it's daylight, this is what we do. And I want no objection from you. She's flying distress flags. That's my brother's ship. They've got a boat lowered. We'll have to stop, my lady. Yes. I only hope this won't delay us too long. She's stopping, sir. Thought she would. I'm still against it. Flying a distress signal. It's against every rule of the sea. It's against every damn convention. Oh, shut up with your banes! It's the only way to stop me, sister. Especially when she's chasing after business. Get down, you! Elizabeth, what a pleasure. James, what's the trouble? We saw the distressed flags. Oh, what a word. What? James, are you telling me there's nothing wrong and you're flying distressed flags? No, I just want you to come on board. I've got something to say to you. It's important. Take me back to the ship, Captain Forbes. We'll be on our way. No, no, Elizabeth. Pull away, lads. Elizabeth! Sharp, you! Elizabeth! Sharp, I want you with me. Sir. Well, don't be so frosty about it. Look, I'll show you aboard the ship. We'll not talk about it, right? You'll not set foot on my ship, sir. I think perhaps he'd better, Captain Forbes, if you don't mind. Right. You're the owner, Lady Fogarty. Very well, Oneidin. Get the other boat out. I'm going across. I don't believe you, James. Uh, tell her again, will you, Sharp? I don't need to hear it again. My cargo is mining equipment. The manifest says so. Well, then you won't object to us having a little look, will you? Just the four of us. The crates are in the forward hold, ma'am. Well, come on, then. <laughs> Take it steady. I don't fancy feeding the fishes. Machinery, James. Here, give me that.
James, I, I swear I didn't know. Ah, oh, well, there you are. If you'd been stopped by a naval patrol, you'd have been in real trouble. I don't know what to say. What does matter? Put it down to brotherly love. Would you excuse us, please, Captain Forbes? A word, please, James. James, what are you up to? I told you, Elizabeth. You're in trouble, real trouble. You know that, don't you? What am I going to do? I'll throw them overboard. That's the best way. Well, I suppose so, yeah. Well, what else can I do? I have to put into port if anybody should find them. <sighs> no, they'll go over the side. Well, now, just a moment. Hold on a bit. I can maybe help. Come in. How? What the devil are you doing here, Baines? Well, I'd like to see what's going on, sir. I do sit down, Captain Baines. Well, now, I can maybe find... Well, I can maybe find a customer. Of course, it'll have to be your country. Now, you've got to get onto Port Norris, otherwise you'll be paying heavy penalties for a cargo rotting at the quayside. Well, I've got a bit of spare time. I'll probably find somebody. Of course, it's a hell of a risk I'll be taking. Mr. Aneden, you can't do a thing like that. You mind your own business, will you, Will? Well, now, what shall we say? Pound a piece, eh? Well, I'll be taking all the risks. I don't know. And what's that? It's a banker's draft. Look, 500 guns at a pound each. Now, 500 pounds is nothing to be sneezed at. Now, I'll get them out of these waters double quick. Make it out, shall I? No, you won't. You hold on a bit, James. Captain Baines, what would you do? Me, I'd throw them overboard double quick, Mum. And don't you interfere. Look, Elizabeth, I've done what I can to help, but it is, of course, entirely up to you. Two pounds a gun. Done. You're mad. Stark mad. Am I? Two pounds each. I'd have gone up to four. Yes, carrying stores for the military, I find I have an extra package of guns. I know the quartermaster. He knows me, owes me a favour. I expect to be glad of the extra. Say, six pounds each. That's two thousand pounds profit. <laughs> well, I've got to have someone to show for the boys, haven't we? Ah, oh, good to see you, Nesbitt. Good to see you. Welcome to the Cape. Ah, thank you. Ah, oh, well, I thought we might start off with some dinner, then go through the manifest over the brandy. Yeah, I've got a couple of things I think might interest you. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> you brought my wine. Aye, two dozen crates and a pin of brandy, which you shall have from me. Please, Major. Thank you. We've done well, Captain. I'm sorry, ma'am. I really am very sorry. Hardly your fault. Anyway, we have the freight money from Herr Becker, and he can hardly demand it back. Plus a thousand pounds from James. Yes, we've done well enough. I'm glad you're pleased, my lady. I am. But I wonder just how much money my brother will make. Brotherly love, indeed. Well, it all tallies, and even. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You know, there is something else. Something I think might interest you. Well, what might that be? I've got enough wine and brandy for the Something moment. Something for your army stores. What the blue blazes? Yeah, well, it's not on the manifest, I know, but I thought you might like it. Oh, that's a fine piece. You, too. Ah, nice piece indeed. That's a very kind thought, Eden. There's 500 more. How many did you say? 500. Six pounds apiece. They're the best, ammunition included. I'm sure the War Office wouldn't want them to go astray. I'm quite certain they wouldn't. And I'm sure in the hands of the army, they'll be as safe as anywhere. Six pounds each. Aye, cheap, I'd say. I don't think so, Oneedon. All right, four pounds. No, thank you. Is that your last word, Major? Yes. Very well. There's always a market for guns. I'll find a customer elsewhere. I don't think I would do that if I were you. I've paid for them. I must sell them. There's no mention of guns in the manifest. 
Sail with them by all means, but if you do, I shall be obliged to forget our friendship and signal to my friends in the Royal Navy. You'd get about three miles, I'd say, and then where would you be? I thought... I know exactly it... what you thought, James. But I'm not to be bought for a dozen bottles of wine and a pin of brandy. You'll have those guns unloaded and on the quay by morning, or I shall be forced to send a party aboard. Uh, <clears throat> what about compensation? I'm sorry, but my hands are tied. Well, thank you for the dinner. Quite excellent. Good night, Captain Baines. Good night, Major. Good night. Good night, Major. <laughs> Shut up, Ben! Shut up! <laughs> 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 <laughs>